Okay, we have our an interesting integral. We put the integral from zero to ln two of x times e to the minus two x dx. Now this is really similar to something that came out of a video I did recently. So this was kind of in the middle of the video, we had something very similar to this. And in that other video, I think I did it with integration by parts, if I'm remembering. And the suggestion in the comments we had from Duran Esri was to do this using a Laplace transform, even though we don't have our bound going to infinity. So I don't know if this is exactly what he had in mind, but this is how I did it. First, in order to have a Laplace transform, we want this integral going from zero to infinity. So what I can do is force this to happen and put in our same stuff. We have the integral x e minus two x dx. And just notice for this two, if I just change this and I'll just call this, instead of having a two, let's call this an s. And we'll just keep in mind that when we wanna get back to our problem, we need to put back s equal two. So then this integral here is something we know how to do because this is actually just the Laplace transform of this input x. But now of course what we have here is not our original integral, we changed the bounds. Well, all I need to do to make this work is I can subtract off the remaining area. So I can subtract off this integral from natural log two to infinity. Just by the property of the definite integral, you can always break things up this way. If you think about it as this, if you think about it as these two integrals being equal to this, if you just add this one on both sides of the equation, you get the integral from zero to ln two, ln two to infinity equals the whole thing from zero to infinity. And again, on this one, I've replaced the two with an S so we can try to use a Laplace transform on it. But now the problem on this second one is we're still not set up for the Laplace transform just because of this lower bound. We want this to be zero. Well, the trick you can use on this when you have a lower bound that's not zero is we can kind of rewrite it, force it to happen, force the lower bound to zero, but then bring a unit step function into the integral where the unit step function is gonna start at this point. So we're gonna have the unit step function going from, so we're gonna have our unit step function starting at ln two. Now, basically the reason why this works, looking at our rough graph over here, I didn't look at what it actually looks like, but I just wanted to do a rough graph of x times e minus sx. It doesn't really matter what the function is, but if we look at our graph of the unit step function over to the left, it's gonna be something like this, where it's gonna take on the value of one starting at the point of a, in our case, that's gonna be ln two right here. Everything to the left is gonna be zero. So when you throw that into the integral, what happens is it zeroes out everything to the left of the a point. So if we have our a point or ln two right here, what's gonna to happen to this graph when we multiply this in is it's gonna zero out everything over here. It's just gonna kinda of cut it off right here. So what happened with our integral is even though we're starting at zero, it's not changing the problem because our area over in this region is all zeroed out. So this is the same thing as this. But then what that's going to allow us to do here is we can now take a Laplace transform of all this stuff and it's going to be just the Laplace transform of the unit step function from a t minus ln2 just times this x. And one thing I realized I am mixing variables here, sorry about that. So we should have everything in terms of x. So let's make this an x right here as well. But now at this point, basically all we need to do is calculate two Laplace transforms in order to finish it off. This one's very common. We've got a formula for the Laplace transform of say t to the n. This is gonna be equal to s to the n plus one over gamma function of n plus one or n factorial. Well, since our exponent's just a one here, let's use this formula like this. So this piece right here is gonna be one factorial or just one over s to the one plus one or s squared. And then for this Laplace transform right here, we've got a formula for this using the unit step function. So using this formula here, again, the A value in this, that's just gonna be this right here. So the A value is gonna be ln two. So for this first part, let's plug it in here. We're gonna have E minus A value, which is ln two times S. And then we want the Laplace transform of the shifted function F of T, where our F of T or our F of X is just gonna be this X. So we're gonna want the Laplace transform of x plus ln two. So for this value right here, because we're adding and Laplace transform has that property of being a linear operator, we can actually split this up and write this as Laplace of x plus Laplace of ln two. Well, this right here is the one we just did. That's gonna be one over s squared, so we know that. Here, this is just a constant. You could bring it out 
and then we're just getting the Laplace transform of one. So the Laplace transform of one is one over S. So I can write this as ln two over S. So we'll take this and we'll plug it back in here. So what we have here is one over S squared. This, let's start rearranging it a little bit. So with the minus exponent, I can bring it into the denominator and write it as ELN2. And with exponent properties, I can write it like ELN2 all to the S. And then here we just have one over S squared plus LN2 over S. But e to the ln2, this is actually just two. So now we can plug a two in and distribute this in. So what this is gonna look like is one over s squared minus, this is one over two s times this. Here we'll write all over one times s squared. And then here we're gonna have ln2 over two s times s. And maybe one last thing, I'll just factor one over s squared out here, just because we have that in common here and here. So this is gonna become one over s squared, 1 minus 1 over 2 to the s plus ln 2 over 2 to the s times s. But this right here is still kind of a mess, but I don't really care because back to our goal, we want to solve this integral. And what it's really about is plugging in s equal to 2. And I think that's going to be the easiest way to simplify this is just plug in to try to get our answer. So let's evaluate it and see what happens. We plug 2 in here, we're going to have this becomes 1 fourth, 1 minus this becomes a 1 fourth. And then here we have ln2, 2 to the 2 is 4 times 2 here. This here is just going to be 3 fourths. And this right here is going to be an 8. I think what I'll do is let's get a common denominator. So let's multiply in 2 by 2 here. Because when we multiply this part, we're going to get 3 fourths times 1 fourth, or 3 over 16. And now I'm realizing my mistake that I forgot to distribute in the minus sign right here. So this is going to be minus here and also over here, and over here too. So this is gonna be minus, now we've got 16 in the denominator for two ln two, let's write that as ln four. Then putting it together for my final solution, we have three minus ln four over 16, and that's it. Okay, so there you go, really nice method, just using Laplace transforms and the unit step function. Thanks everyone for watching, have a good day.